Hey, what is happening? I hope everybody is doing well. My world is fantastic. And recently I finished a nightstand, a couple of nightstands and a dresser. And now I'm getting started on this king size bed that will match. This project has been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot, but it's been a lot of work. It'll have a total of like 41 panels by the time I get finished laying up all of this veneer with my shop made plywood. I've shown videos on that. And if you missed the video about the shop made plywood, I'll show a little clip here in a bit. So in the middle of gluing up panels, I started milling lumber and it was amazing working with all the lumber from the same tree. All this lumber came from Erion Lumber. It's all cherry and just a beautiful overall tone that was all the same throughout the boards. Incredible. All right, this is slightly off subject, but still related. I love, love, love this process. So what I have here is some shop made plywood. And what I mean by that is I take two layers of quarter inch for this thickness, two layers of quarter inch and put a piece of veneer, raw veneer in between those two layers. And you can see how I'm turning this veneer 90 degrees with the grain to the two pieces of plywood. So that keeps it uh, balanced, right? And I'm using epoxy to adhere this veneer in between these two layers of quarter inch. And what you end up with is a very flat, straight, strong material. This panel that I'm making is going to end up being a, it'll look like a panel, but it'll actually be a secret door. So I need it to be dead flat. And of course this has glue from adhering the cherry all the way around, but I know by siding these edges that it is very straight and flat. So that is really awesome. So anyway, this cherry banding has been applied all the way around and I'm gonna get that flush with this substrate, shop made plywood. Get this dude in here, get this guy up a little. So I'm gonna go through this process just to show you how versatile a belt sander is. Now I can run this through my drum sander, that'd be one way to get this flush, but uh, let's say you didn't have a drum sander, but you had a belt sander, this is a fantastic choice for doing this process. So keep in mind when you're sanding a couple of things. Uh, first of all, this cherry or this wood, solid wood is going to be harder than the substrate. So it's kind of backwards from what I'm wanting because this cherry is slightly sticking up. I need to get this flush. So in order to accommodate that, we'll just let the pressure of the belt sander be in the appropriate position. In other words, when I'm sanding this edge, I want this, the center of this pad or somewhere in here in the, what I would call the balance point of this sander, that is going to be applying the pressure right on that solid cherry. So I would be right, right at that tipping point and just pulled back slightly. That way I'm not going to be putting any pressure back here where this back roller could dig in. And if I'm up here, of course, the back of the belt is also going to dig in. So I need to be right up there like that. And this is the sound that you're after. Right? That is flat. So I'm using this segmented uh, mortise and tenon template kit on the Panther router, and I love this thing. It's super easy to set up. So here I am going to be cutting a half inch mortise and tenon. So you can see this column here. And so I want a mortise and a tenon that are three and an eighth. So there it is. So I just go straight across and I can see that I need one of these that's marked with a circle on each end and then two that are marked one inch. Since it's a two to one ratio, this is actually two inches. It's marked one inch, but these combined will give me that three and an eighth tenon mortise. All right, to put these in place, I'll just bring these toward the center. Use one of these right in the center and that centers everything automagically, right? You tighten these guys up, boom, that easy. So those four segmented templates will cut a three and an eighth mortise and a tenon. Yeah, man. That's how you do it. 
Okay, so the template holder is adjustable. You can see it move up or down, and I can use a scrap block of wood in the thickness gauge to set the tenon and the mortise to be dead center in my work. <laughs> and check this out. 0.627 and 0.628. Yeah, that's close. Working on the pan router today, and I had made these blocks, stops, I guess, just by cutting a couple of simple rabbits and making sure that everything is dead square. And these are fantastic because I, I cut some mortises and some tenons, and I need to move the fence to do another operation, but then I'll need to bring it back. So I can just bring this right up here to this, lock that down, remove this clamp. I can slide my fence out of the way, and then when I'm ready, I can bring it back, and it's gonna be registered, boom, exactly there. If this was in the way and I needed more room, I could put a maybe a stop over here, and use a, utilize a block of wood to as a spacer, right? So, yeah, man. All right, so the template's in place. The router bit is centered in the height with the work. Now I need to set the depth of the router bit, right? So I can just bring the router bit till it just makes contact, boom, right there. And then down here, there's this stop and a scale. So I can set this on, I want an inch and a quarter deep. Actually, the tenon will be inch and a quarter. So I'm gonna set this at inch and five sixteenths, just give it a little slack, a little bit of a glue pocket. So now I know that this router bit is going to cut exactly an inch and five sixteenths deep mortise. All right, let's see how we did. Bam, awesome, right? Dead on, on the layout lines. And I could have cut this longer, but it's a panther router, man, I know it's gonna fit. I could sneak up on a, maybe a slightly uh, smaller tenon, but beautiful. A scribe or a compass in the workshop can be a huge time saver. And so what I've got here, I've got some legs, this goes to a footboard, headboard and a footboard, and I'm gonna have some rails coming across here. This is just fall off, right? And I've got the location marked, but I need centers of this, and I also need center this way, and I'm gonna need center of my pieces as well, so I can make all these mortise and tenons at the panda router. Lots of ways to find centers of that, but here's how I do it. Simple scribe and this is some fall off same size material and so what i can do is just get down here at eye level to the piece and i'm just going to shoot for somewhere in the center i'm i just want to get close of course being exact would be good but make one mark flip it over do it again you can see there's space in between and i can just shoot for center of that split the difference I'm gonna put a small mark here, try that again, flip it over, and that looks pretty good. So now I know that that is dead on center, right? So I can mark my pieces. And this is for mica table, I know it's flat. Just wanna make sure that there's nothing underneath it. I'll push down on this just in case there's any warp in the table or maybe the leg has bowed a little bit. Push it down, you can see a little bit of a gap there so I can bring it closer to the edge here. And that's the center in that direction. That's awesome, right? Same thing with this one. This will be my rail. I also need a center mark here. So when I go to the panel router, since it works off the of center marks, uh, at least for the first ones, you can set stops after that. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll just put a small mark here, flip it over, Sometimes I get lucky, it's dead center. So you just put a mark, put a mark, boom. So that's my center in between these two marks for this direction. I also need this center. So what I can do is utilizing this compass and I can just strike an arc. I just need to be a little bit over half 
This is just simple geometry, right? Do that again. Strike an arc. And where those uh, radiuses intersect is where dead center is. Boom. So that's that center. How fantastic is that? Lots of ways to do things, yeah? So at this point, I have some very preliminary dry fitting going on, and I hadn't even made the toe kicks for the pedestals yet because on the headboard and the footboard, there's some offsets, and I wanted to make sure that the length of the toe kicks would accommodate those offsets. My plan for this bed is to make it completely uh, able to be assembled without any screws or screw guns or anything. I'm going to use knobs to hold some of the components together. That way you don't have to have a wrench or an Allen key or anything to assemble it, just a series of knobs. Hey gang, I thought I'd show some progress shots of the bed. Hopefully you saw the chest of drawers and nightstands that this will be matching. It's kind of a waterbed style bed with the pedestals. And this will have three panels, one, two, three. The headboard is similar, of course, mattress here. And then here, uh, you know, two more styles and then panel, panel, panel. And of course, this rail will go in between here, this intermediate rail, somewhere in there. And then another panel here, another panel here, three little styles, and this will be open so you'll see the wall behind it that area of the headboard and let me move this guy the footboard is similar but it's going to have some trickery let me explain so here will be a panel a panel three more bars and two more little panels but one of those bars will be removable because it will actually be a key it will house a magnet that will access a latch here to open this door. So this panel will actually be a door. I believe I'm gonna utilize saw hinges here. Of course, when you open this door, you'll be seeing part of the mattress here, but you will still have access to this compartment in here. And the reason I wanted to put a latch is because, you know, the pressure of the foot of the mattress could make this pop open if it didn't have some sort of a latch to hold it closed. And of course down here, this will be, I believe I use a Wenge material just to make that dark like a toe kit so it'll kind of match. Of course, down in here on each pedestal, we'll also have that Wenge. And then uh, four drawers and a door on that, on the far end near the headboard, which will actually be behind or concealed by each nightstand. Anyway, making good progress. I remember feeling really good at this stage. I have a lot of the styles and rails grooved and I can start assembling, dry fitting some of these panels to make sure everything's gonna work before I spread the glue, right? All right, so these three panels are, <clears throat> of course, just out of the vacuum bag. Just They need trimmed, sanded, all that. But you see this grain match, boom, 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 all the way across. Three panels, these will be for the headboard. That's some beautiful chatoyants. And headboard over here, kind of blends in with the background, but dry assembled, right? And so, boom, 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 those three panels. There'll be another rail down here at the bottom. You can see the, the mortise there, right? This top cap will have a heavy chamfer. It might even not be this wide yet, I don't know. I might have to cut that down. But this will have a chamfer that will match the tops on the nightstands and, and dresser. But um, yeah, panels matched, grain. And this area, those two areas in the middle and the one on the end, that is supposed to be open. So the wall will show behind it. I hope it looks okay. 
and you know hopefully it doesn't look like four missing panels <laughs> but uh, you know how it is but yeah I like it getting ready to cut these panels and I don't know if it shows up on camera but I've got this seam right here so I want to cut a reference edge that's perfectly parallel with that seam and I can do that easily with this this David Bedrosian Fritz and Franz jig. This thing is fantastic. I love any chance I get to use it. And I've calibrated or, or cut my zero clearance by loosening these three, three screws. He provides the wrench that sits there with some magnets. And that is direct alignment with the left side of the blade on both the Fritz and the Franz, I believe the front and the rear. And so I know that this point of reference is where I need to set up the lines on my panel. So, I, and I have this one clamped in place. You really don't need, even need to clamp it, but I went ahead and clamped it. And so I can line that first one up there and this rear one right in there. And then there's a, a handle here let me see, let me, let me reposition the camera. You see this rear one has a handle that I can just squeeze everything together as I push it through. And you'll notice, I think you can notice, this is not really square here, but this panel was just glued up, so it, that's why I'm creating reference edges now. Once I have this reference edge established, that'll be a straight cut, then I can use the rip fence to cut the other side, and then I'll, I'll have three parallel panels, and then I can use the cross-cut uh, part of the slider to cut them to width. So yeah, utilizing a Fritz Franz jig is a superb way to make these cuts, and David's design is the best I've ever seen. I'll leave a link to his Instagram account in my description, and you can reach out to him through a DM. All right, there's a the headboard, all the panels fit. Everything's really tight. This needs a connection here. It's the only, I actually goofed when I cut these legs. I forgot to add for the tenon, but no big shake. I'll just put a couple of loose tenons, what they call loose. I think it's a weird name for it because they'll be glued in tight. <laughs> but floating tenons, also kind of weird. They won't be floating, but separate, not integral, yeah? But yeah, man, I'm uh, I'm liking it. Of course, it's blocky. It needs a little bit of detail. This will get chamfered. I've already mentioned, but uh, yeah, man, progress. All right, walking into the garage part, and I've got this all set up. You can see I've got the toe kicks in place and this center spacer and also a support for the mattress platforms. Oh, and note those small holes down at the legs. I need to address that at the footboard and the headboard. So I wanted to share something with you. So uh, this probably won't make a lot of sense, but this is a headboard. This is the front. And one little area here is going to show kind of like a toe kick area, and it would just produce this hole. I want to fill that. So I just made this. This is a Baltic birch with some Wenge veneer. And you can see I've created this uh, dado here and here. And this is the curve of the dado blade right so i just produce this thing we used to call this a relish it's sometimes uh, referred to as a haunch same with this situation here there's some material there rather than clearing that out and squaring that all up which doesn't really do you any good you can just remove that and now this will seat in there like that this will all get glued in place when all the joinery happens when all the joinery gets glued. Of course, this will get clamped this direction as well. And so it, uh, yeah, it kind of creates a wedge. So I'll glue this first and then slip this piece in with glue and I can clamp that. And it'll actually add a little bit of uh, support or bracing at this corner, not that it needs it, but uh, yeah. And like I said, only about this much Inch and a half of this is going to show here in the front. 
So here's a view of that Wenge toe kick area on the footboard and then of course toe kick on the pedestals and then up toward the front up toward the front of the headboard that little space I filled in. So here I have the large Festool Domino. I also have the Seneca dock plate XL installed. This is upright in my Domino dock and I'm creating these mortises in all four legs. For me, it's easier to do it this way rather than clamping each part, turning it over. Just a lot of ways to do things. All right, so now I'm cutting the mortises in the top rails and I'm utilizing my 90 degree deck. This fits either machine, the DF500 or the XL, and it provides maximum stability. I absolutely love this thing. This is a new design. I'm having these CNC cut. The new ones will come with bigger knobs and also anodized. They're gonna look fantastic. So stay tuned for that release. All right, so how good does it feel when you cut all these corresponding grooves and dados and mortises and tenons and it all fits together? That's fantastic, yeah? So I just got done with a uh, fairly large glue up and something that I wanted to share with you, I've got these magnetic pads are just a piece of Baltic birch with some leather and a couple of magnets. And the reason I put two magnets is because sometimes I don't want the, the cowl exactly centered on there. I want to put it to one edge. And the reason I want to do that at times is because I can put a little bit better focus to this component, which is off, you know, in the center of this. And I can't quite reach it because this clamps in the way. And so rather than just putting that like that, which, would actually put pressure here and cause that to twist. I can bring that down as far as I can. And that's going to focus that pressure. Wow. A lot better on that style there. And that tightened up just right. Yeah, man. Awesome. A successful glue up. I ended up using epoxy for the long open time. So now that the headboard and footboard are glued up, I can start creating mortises for these sauce hinges. And I'm not going to go into too much detail here. I do have a video on sauce hinges. You can find that link in the description. Of course, I had to make a few sample cuts to make sure I had a good fit and also the correct back set with the door and the frame. So I was very excited at this point. There's a lot of grooves, a lot of dados, mortises, and everything had to fit together. And Super pleased with the results thus far. And I thought I'd share with you my shop. This is my patio on the north side of my shop. Big door open where my dust collector and air compressor, some other tools are, machines. Good view of the overall house. And here's a view of the front or the south side. You can see my workbench there. Anyway, thanks a ton for watching. I absolutely appreciate it. Make your day amazing.